And now, having passed the first weighing inspection, to the draw frame for finishing the sliver. When they leave this operation, the finished slivers are smooth, lustrous, and even. Uniform slivers make uniform twine. No thin spots to break later. No thick spots to jam in the baler's needle or knotter. Strength, uniformity, maximum length, and low cost. These are the standards that pay off for the American farmer in handling and storage. These are the standards that pay off in minimum field stops. These are the standards that pay off in farm profits. Spinning is the next operation. This is where the sliver is turned into twine. Twelve clean, strong, uniform, treated slivers are fed into the gill spinner and twisted 12 times per foot under high uniform tension. This twist compresses the individual fibers so the spaced ends cannot pull apart. No matter how fine the twine, it won't help the farmer unless it feeds freely in the baler to the last foot. That's where a compact, evenly wound ball comes in. High-speed balling machines wind up smoothly with a diagonal wind and automatically stop when the ball is full. But we're not finished yet. The most exacting quality control inspections come with the finished product. A regular percentage of the balls of twine are completely unwound and laid out on this rack so that the inspector may visually examine the entire ball to ensure there is no unevenness or other defect. An equally important test is for tensile strength. Twine made from Sisalana tests on an average of 50 pounds more than that made from Henneken. That's why U.S. mills use Sisalana and Sisalana only for baler twine. And every completed ball of twine is weighed before packing to guarantee the farmer will get full measure for his money. Cordage industry plans production schedules months ahead in order to keep the mills busy all year round. This helps to keep down the cost of twine. Modern U.S. manufacturing and handling methods mean efficient production. This helps to keep down the cost of twine. Sturdy packaging means safe delivery to warehouses near America's great farms, so there will be no delay in supplying farmers promptly during the peak haying season. This too helps to keep down the cost of twine. Progressive farmers spend thousands of hours and thousands of dollars in planning, in labor, in the finest of mechanized equipment to make American farms the most productive in the world. They need and deserve the best of equipment and supplies. The U.S. cordage industry is doing its part in supplying reliable, economical twine. Twine that runs free through the baler, that bales without snagging, that knots without snarling that keeps the bales secure in the field or barn until needed, that resists rot, rodents, and mildew, and handles without breaking. Every foot of U.S.-made baler twine is made to hold bales of 50, 60, 70 pounds, even more if the moisture content of the hay is high. The chemical emulsion, which we saw treating the raw fiber, will keep these bales intact through the winter. But this is not the end of the twine story. Forward-looking cordage men are constantly seeking ways to improve the product. New materials, new blends, new methods of manufacturing are being explored and tested by the industry. To date, no adequate substitute has been found that has the advantages of strength, long life, and the low cost of Sisalana. But research laboratories are continuing to provide this progressive industry with facts, information, and possible future developments, not only in baler and binder twine, but in other cordage products. As examples, these products are made of nylon, dacron, orlon, fiberglass, each for a special purpose. 
but manila is the fiber most used in rope making. Manila fiber is treated, combed into slivers, and spun exactly as with twine, except that here it is called yarn to distinguish it from twine. The size, composition, and number of yarns is determined by the character of rope to be made. Here, a number of yarns are being spun to form a strand. And three strands are being twisted together to form rope. Our mills make a wide variety of rope because each job demands something different of it. For instance, there's wheat pouring into a grain elevator. And there it is being handled by a scoop operated with a manila shovel line. Rope helps the farmer market his wheat. Here it's branding time. That lariat is starting meat on its long journey toward the dinner table. Try to figure this job without rope. Fish two. These are menhaden, which will be converted into farm fertilizer. Power. Power brought to homes, farms, and factories with the aid of rope. Mooring lines. The giant hawsers that hold ocean liners. Let's not forget sports and recreation. We wish we knew the number of mountain climbers' lives that have been saved by rope. But of course, defense requirements receive first priorities. There is no substitute for rope in the many applications of the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy. Alongside the obvious materials like copper, uranium, or rubber, manila and sisalana fibers have been classified as a strategic material by the Department of Defense. This means that millions of pounds of prime manila and sisalana are being stockpiled in government warehouses, earmarked for priority needs like stretcher rigging to save lives or cargo nets to supply ships. But unlike permanent materials, manila and sisalana are vegetable fibers. They cannot be stored away and forgotten. So the cordage industry is doing its part in national defense by rotating the stockpile. That is, keeping the government supplied with new fiber so that this strategic material will be there when it is needed. And there's no more strategic use for the products of cordage fiber than on the farm. Prosperous agriculture is just as important as prosperous industry to the strength of the United States. Strength through prosperity. Prosperity through thoughtful farm planning, productive labor, and efficient and reliable farm equipment and supplies.